Don't sit here thinking you too cute. Yes, God. Come on. Don't sit here thinking you too established. Don't sit here thinking you're too much. The fact that you can sit in this church with your arms folded right now looking crazy is only because God kept you. And so since you're here, since we're all in the building, since we've all gathered under the same roof today, I figure we can just bless them together. Y'all gonna help? This is my favorite section right here. A song real simple, it says, I'll never be more loved than I am right. Wasn't holding you up. So there's nothing I can do to let you know now. Doesn't take a trophy for you to make the Lord cry. You'll never be more loved than you are right. But they say, Going through a storm, but I won't go down. I can your voice. So I wouldn't drown You've never been closer than you are right now I want every voice lift the gyro Gyro, you are enough Come on, showers of blessings Gyro, you are enough And I will be I will be content In them In because Jaro, Jaro, you are enough. Say Jaro, Jaro, you are enough. Open up your mouth, Jaro, Jaro, you are enough. And I will be, I will be content. No matter what it is, every circumstance. I just You ought to testify Forever enough Always Always enough More than More than enough Forever enough Say Forever enough Always enough Always enough More More than enough
if a bird doesn't worry, then baby, why should I? If animals are not worried about how they're going to get their next meal, because they know it's out there, they're not worried because they know it's out there. There's something he wants to do for every person in this room. It's out there. You don't have to worry about it. You just have to put a phrase on it. You see, there are some things in your life sitting like this ain't going to get for you. I ain't said nothing to nobody back here. There are some things in your life that sitting cute ain't going to get for you. You're going to have to give them something. Said how much more? How much more? How much more? How much more? Will you supply every need? Say how much more? Will you supply every need? Say how much more? Will you watch over my family? How much more? Will you protect those children? How much more? Will you provide for me? How much more? Said how much more? How much more? How many of you came and realized that God want to do something in your life? I'm going to say that one more time. Can I come down here? How many of you realize that God want to do something in your life? Yes. But you sat there if God is not real. They sung the song, God is my everything. I'm gonna say that one more time. They sung the song, God is my everything. The Bible says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. See, if you don't know what God is, you don't know God to be your everything. That's why you couldn't clap your hands. That's why you couldn't lift your hand. That's why you couldn't open your mouth and give God a prayer. Then they sung the song, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Y'all missed it, Y'all missed it. They sung the song, my provider, my provider, my provider. Now if he my everything, whatever I need, he's going to provide it for me. I'm going to say that one time. If he's my everything, everything I need, he's going to provide it. So it doesn't matter what the devil said. It doesn't matter what life been told on me. It doesn't matter how my back been against the wall. It doesn't matter about my finance. It doesn't matter about my health issues. It doesn't matter about my mind. If he's Jehovah Jireh, he's Jehovah Jireh. If he's Jehovah Jireh, whatever I need, he's going to provide. Good God. So you just don't sit there. Good God. If I was you, whatever I'm going through, I'd have lift my hands, get out my seat, and gave God a praise because he's my Jehovah Jireh. Watch over me. 
He's my Jehovah Jireh. 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 I'm going to say it again. He's my Jehovah Jireh. Watch this. Watch this here. So, Abish, Abish, everybody walked in here today. You're 100% healthy. You're 100% in your right mind. You're 100% financially blessed. You're 100% that ain't got nothing going on in your life. You're, you're 100% done. Got it going on. You're 100% that all your bills are paid. You're 100% that had no issue in your life. You're 100% ain't lost nobody in your family. You're 100% that ain't. But, but if you've been through any kind of storm, I said if you've been any kind of storm, and he had to build Jehovah Jireh to you. And I said he had to build Jehovah Jireh to you. I said if you've been through any kind of storm, he had to build Jehovah Jireh to you. And any kind of way, because I, I want you to jump on your feet and give God a... I'm not talking about the people who ain't never went through nothing. I'm not talking to the people who ain't never had nothing happen in their life. But you had some things happen in your life, and God had to be Jehovah Jireh, my provider, my keeper, my way maker. Huh, good God, man. I want you to just give God a praise over here. Hallelujah. 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 See, see, I'm not going to have a, see, the Bible says, nah. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you by yourself. That you don't have no help when you go through something. So the Bible say on the day of Pentecost, y'all missed it. Yeah, they missed it. The Bible said on the day of Pentecost, they all was in one room with the same mind. I need help. I need a healing. I need deliverance. I need a blessing. I need a breakthrough. I need God to move. I need God to fix the thing. And they all was in one room with the same mind. And the Holy Ghost came like a mighty rush of wind. And it sat on them. Somebody say, God is getting ready to sit on me. Stop, God is getting ready to sit on me. Woo. Woo. I tell you, I tell you to high five my neighbor and say, neighbor, God is getting ready to sit on my situation. Get ready to sit up by the way. Cause he's everything I need. He's everything I need. He's everything I need. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. My God. My God. My God. My God. Mother, you sit here with this nice suit on, but you should be tearing this church up. For what you need God to do, ain't no devil hell to stop God from moving. See, when I believe God, I respond to God. When I believe God, I react to God. When I need God to do something for me, I don't just sit still. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't just sit still and look pretty and look cute. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But it's time that we get out of our feet and let the devil know if God is my Jehovah Jireh, he's going to provide. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what the lawyer said. I don't care what the next day said. I don't care what anybody said. If God is my provider, if I trust in God with all my heart and leave out into my own understanding, uh, I'm not here alone. I'm not a preacher here. I'm not here alone. Hallelujah. Let me, let me help you. Come on, brother Donald. Let, let me help you. And I'm going to go ahead and... When I got out of the hospital, 
from having a major stroke. I just didn't sit still. They had to pack me in the church like this year. But I had to get to God. Cause the doctor told me there was no hope. The doctor told me I'd never be the same. The doctor told me I'd be a vegetarian. The doctor told me I have mental problems. The doctor told me I'd never walk again. They packed me in the church. Cause I needed Jehovah Child. I didn't need a pastor. I didn't need church members. I need Jehovah Child. Anybody need Jehovah Jireh today? Anybody need Jehovah Jireh? Anybody need Jehovah Jireh? I say, do anybody need Jehovah Jireh? Your provider. Oh God. Oh God. Come on, clap those hands. I got here long. I got peace. Come on, clap. Turn your Bible to the book of Acts. The book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 2. Turn your Bible to the book of Acts, chapter 2. Oh God. See. See, sometimes. You bump into your miracle. Y'all missed that. See, you ever been going somewhere and you was broke? You was broke? And just because you got up and went, you bumped into a hundred dollars that were laying on the ground? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? You didn't have no food on the table and you didn't know how you were going to eat because you had no money in your pocket and you bumped into a friend and said, do you want something to eat? Go out and eat. They didn't realize you were hungry. I come to tell you, God, if you give God a praise, you're about to bump into a blessing. I don't know who I'm talking to. you about to bump into a blessing. Hallelujah. You ain't expecting, but God said, I'm getting ready to do a new thing. Hallelujah. I got, I got the priest. I got the priest. The book of Acts chapter 2. Chapter 2. Verse 1. We're going to read down to verse 4. Verse 4. When you read it, stay on your feet for the reading of the word, and we're going to read it together. Stay on your feet, we're going to read it together. When you guys say, I have it. Okay, let's begin to read. And when the day of Pentecost... They were all filled. Somebody said apostolic movement. You may be seated. You may be seated. I want to talk about an apostolic movement. Listen to me. Listen to me. The devil has us so full till we are tricked, till we don't realize what God is doing to us. I'm going to say this one more time. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. But a white man not, work will not be ashamed, but divine the word of truth. Yes. See, when you go into the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was working then, but it was only working on certain peoples. Yes, it was only certain people who had it, so they had to get to the prophet or the seer in order to get a word from God or, or, or to get God to, or get God to deliver. We, 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 we can't see because we don't understand that the Holy Spirit has always been here. But we always want to celebrate the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost is a feast. It represents the Holy Spirit. It was a feast that took place. 
of, the, of every year. It was a feast. Yes, so what you're here doing today is you celebrating a feast, but the Holy Spirit has ascended. God says in the Old Testament, he said, I'm going to do a new thing. You ain't have to run and go find a pastor. You ain't going to have to run and go find prophets and evangelists. You ain't going to have to run and go find pastors and teachers here. He said, because I'm going to do a new thing. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get in everybody. Yeah, yeah y'all missed it. He said, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get in everybody. So if you're on the job, good God, the Holy Ghost is with you. Uh, uh, y'all don't want to talk to me. If you're right in your car, the Holy Ghost is with you. Good God, man. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No matter where you at, the Holy Ghost with you because the Holy Ghost did in all of us. But the problem is that you don't want to receive what God gave you. Uh, can, can I work this just a little bit? You don't want to receive what God gave you, but you'll receive what man says with no problem. And you'll respond to what man says you know, I, and react to what man said. And man say this, and man say that, and man say this, and man say don't go there, and man say don't act like that. God, I know. How I know, cause the whole world responded to COVID-19 when they said everybody put a mask on. You responded. You responded. But God said, I need you to get filled with something so you'll be able to do things that you can't do. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all missed it. I need you to get filled with something so you'll be able to act like you don't want to act. I need you to get filled with something so you can live like I told you to live. I need you to get filled with something so you can talk like me. I need you to get filled with something so you can walk like me. I need you to get filled with something so you can live like I live. I need you to get filled with something so you can heal like I heal. I need you to get filled with something so you can deliver like I deliver. I need you to get filled with the Holy Ghost. But we as Christians, as church going people, will rather come and beg at the altar till it gets filled. I'm talking about the apostolic movement. When Jesus healed the lady with the issue of blood, that was the apostolic movement. When Jesus called Lazarus from the grave, that was the apostolic movement. Y'all, y'all missing this thing. That was the apostolic. See, apostolic come from apostles. Oh, uh, the sit one. Have God sit you to do anything? Yeah, y'all, y'all don't want to talk to me. Y'all don't want to talk to me. I say, high five your neighbor. Say, neighbor, have God ever sent you to do anything? Wait for the answer. Say, what you say? He sent you to save your family. Are you doing that? He sent you to change the world. Are you doing that? He don't send everybody just to preach. Uh, y'all missed it. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all miss it. He don't say everybody just to stand in a pool pit. Good God. Ha. But good God, your pool pit can be in your living room. Your pool pit can be on the job. Your pool pit can be while you ride down the road. Ha. Yeah. Because ha. Ha. all you're doing is pulling somebody out the pit. Ha. And Joseph's brother pulled him out the pit. Yeah. I'm talking about an apostolic movement. I'm talking about an apostolic movement. Why we can't get an apostolic movement in the church here because nobody want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because if I get filled with the Holy Ghost, I can't act like I want to act. I can't do what I want to do. I can't live like I want to live. I can't say what I want to say. I can't go where I want to go. I can't do it. I can't sit around everybody. I can't talk that junk with everybody. I can't cuss. I can't hug. I can't fight because I'm filled with something. I feel with something. Can I, can I help you? Can I help you? Can I help you right now? You know, you know, like, 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 like when, when, when a lady get pregnant, 
what she used to do, she can't do no more. Because she filled with something. Y'all, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Huh? She can't go where she want to go and do what she want to do. She can't drink and eat everything she used to eat because she filled with something. And because I'm filled with something, if I do the wrong thing, I damn it what's in me. Can I preach the thing this month? I damn it what's on the inside of me. So I can't do what I want to do because I'm filled with something. I find you never say I'm filled with something. Can I work this this morning? Can I work this this morning? Oh God, hallelujah. So why you put up with everything and like everything to go on because you refuse to get filled? You refuse to get filled. David said it like this year. He said, he anointed my head with all. Wait a minute. In my cup, run over. In other words, he said, what's in my cup, done filled it up. And it can't hold no more. Y'all missed that. What's in my cup is run over because my cup can't hold no more. That's why I don't understand why Christians come to church and you the only one saved. I don't understand why Christians, you the only one want to be delivered. If you feel it and your cup run over, you are being excited about your neighbor. You are being excited about your family. You are being excited about your coworker. You are being excited about your neighborhood. Because you feel with something and your cup is running over. Can I work this? Can I work this? Can I work this? Oh, good. Read Deuteronomy Romans chapter 16. I, I want you to understand this year. Deuteronomy Romans chapter 16, verse 9 through 10. Read it quickly. Seven weeks shall thou number unto thee. He, say, he said, now, in order for you to understand Pentecost, you got to count seven weeks. If you stop at seven weeks, you don't get Pentecost, you're getting 49 days. But you have to endure the, uh, the 50 day. He says seven weeks, you got to count. And after the seven weeks, it's going to become Pentecost or it's going to become the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, when the full time has come, he sent me in the world to save the lost. So when Pentecost had fully come, it hadn't fully come because in the Old Testament, only certain people had it. Paul, I'm teaching you here this morning. It had fully come. Good God. Because God, I have to run to see the city and find out where the prophet is. But when it fully came, it sat on all of us. Black, white, Mexican, Puerto Rican, Japanese, Spanish, African, no matter who we are, the Holy Spirit is sat on all of America, good God, uh, whatever state you're in, whatever country, the Holy Spirit is sitting and sat on us. Whatever church you're in, the Holy Spirit is sitting and sat on us. Come on, read. Begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest. To put the sickle to the corn. Uh huh. He said to put the sickle to the corn. Come on, talk to me. And okay. thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God. And thou shalt keep the feast of the week. Thou shalt keep the day when the Holy Ghost, when the Holy Ghost ascended. Thou shalt keep Pentecost. Good God. So there's no time that you come to church that you should not keep Pentecost. Come on. Come on. If you want God to do something in your life, do that. Start fasting for seven weeks. And on that fifth day, give God a praise. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Read your Bible for seven weeks straight. And on that fifth day, give God a praise. Can I want to say? He says for seven weeks, you got to keep this. But on the fifth day, there you go. Satan understand that. Can I work this? Satan understand that there. That's why Satan don't want you to know. That's why Satan don't want you to arrive to this point. 
Because Satan does. Because in the Old Testament, uh, after 49 days, they had to let all the slaveries go. Yeah, y'all, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. Did they get it? They had to let all the say. So no matter what the enemy been doing to you, how he got you bound, how he been trying to destroy you, how he been trying to bring you down, how he been trying to hold you back up. Girl, on that fifth day, he got to let go what he been holding on to. Somebody said, let it go. Read, read the book. I got to go a little deeper. Give the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God with a tribute of a free will offering of thine hand. Now watch this here. Now watch this here. See the problem? Satan has tricked you so much. And I ain't got time to teach that because I ain't going to get in it there. But I'm just going to give you an outline of it. Huh? On Pentecost, you're supposed to bring God a $50 offering. Good. You're supposed to bring God a free will offering. Not just Good God, not just come and get and sit down and want the Holy Ghost to sell you. You got to bring God a free will offering. And what is that your praise? What's that your finance? Oh yeah, I don't want I don't want to talk to me. But you got to bring God a free will offering. Huh. See, this is the Bible. Jesus said, You search the scriptures. You search the scriptures and thank you found life. Thank you found life. But all the scripture does, it point back to me. Oh God, they point back to me. I'm Jehovah Jireh. Oh God. I'm your provider. I'm your peace. I'm your joy. I'm your strength. I protect you. I fight for you. Oh God. Oh God. So watch this here. If Jesus does that, are y'all with me this morning? If Jesus does that, then why I don't want the Holy Ghost? This is what Jesus said. He said, I'm not going to leave you comfort, but I'm going to send somebody just like me. So if Jesus is my provider, that means the Holy Ghost is my provider. If Jesus is my protector, that means the Holy Ghost is my protector. Oh, if Jesus is my strength, that means the Holy Ghost is my strength. If Jesus is my way maker, that means the Holy Ghost is my way maker. Because I'm going to send somebody just like me. Huh? Let us make man in our own image. I want somebody just like me. Just like me. I don't want nobody who's going to act like me. I don't want nobody who's not, not going to act like me. If you're blind, I need somebody who can heal the blind. If you're deaf, I need somebody who can open the ears up. If you're sick, I need somebody who can heal. Y'all missing this thing. Y'all missing this thing. Oh, good call the mighty. Good call the mighty. Are y'all with me this morning? Oh, God. If you're going through a storm, I need somebody just like me who can pull you out the storm. I need somebody who can speak to the storm and say, Peace be still. I need somebody who can deliver. I need somebody who can take two fishes and five loaves of bread and feed a multitude. I need somebody who can act just like me. Oh, good God. I need somebody. So, good God. So, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came and, and sat on them to act like Him. To act like him, not to come with your head down, not to come with your attitude, not to come complaining, not to come hurting. I need somebody who will act like me. Sit on it. Come on now. Am I working this? I need somebody who will act like me. 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 Come here, brother. Act like me. Act like me. He just told me. He got a thorn in his side. I'm going to pray for you. He just told me. He need a blessing to come in his hands. I'm going to pray for your hands. But I need somebody who's going to act like me. That call those things that be not as though they were. I need somebody who will act like me and say, go in peace. 
And by the time you make it back home, you already healed. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Good God. Huh? Good. When the man came to Jesus and said, good God, 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 I'm not even worthy for you to come out of my roof, God. But all you got to do is speak a word. Huh? All you got to do is open your mouth. Huh? All you got to do is declare. Huh? All you got to speak it out your mouth. Huh? And my servant will be healed. Huh? Jesus said, go. Huh? Huh? And the man was the only way going home, God. And met his servant home and said, your son already healed. God. He said, what time he got healed? He said, he realized that the same time when Jesus said, your son will be healed. I need somebody who can speak in my life. I need somebody who can work in my life. I need somebody who can pull me out the pit. I need the Holy Ghost. You see how the enemy fooled us? Pray for me. I already done prayed for me. I need a miracle. Oh, can I work this year? Tell you that say, I already prayed for myself. I need a miracle. I know that's right. I need a miracle. Hallelujah. See, we too busy praying and can't help nobody. Oh, I'm going to say that one more time. We too busy praying and can't help nobody. Oh, God. But God said, I'm going to give you some help. I'm going to give you some help. I need two or three of you to jump on your feet and give God a crazy prayer and say, help me, Lord. I don't know who I'm talking to. If you're watching me on TV, right in your living room, God, uh, jump on your feet and give God a prayer and say, help me, Lord. Uh, help me with myself, God. Help me with my family, God. Help me with my mind, God. Uh, help me with my attitude, God. Help me with my character, God. Help me with my ways, God. Help me do the right thing, God. Help me live right, God. Help me walk right, God. Help me talk right, God. Help me see right, God. Help me act right, God. Help me, God. Somebody shout, help, God. I'm going to send you a helper. 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 Are y'all with me? I'm going to send you a helper. Renee in here. I'm going to send you a helper. Come on, Renee, right quick. I'm going to send you a helper. I'm, run. I'm going to send you a helper. Run, her up. Good God, man. Get ready to some shout music. Shout for me, ready to Go ahead. Go ahead. Cut it. Cut it. See, that's what y'all want. But she ain't got no Holy Ghost. She can dance because that's in her nature. She can dance. That's in her nature. Look at her. She dances like she can, like she feels sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, and lay her hands on you and heal you and raise the dead. But she can dance. That's what you want. You don't want something that can really work for you. You don't want something that can really bring you out. You don't want something that can really change your life. You don't want something that can really open the door for you. You want that. That's what you want. That's what you want. And see, she'll go to church. And I'm not saying she's not living a bad life. Y'all don't misunderstand me. So y'all go to judge. What I'm saying, they'll call that the Holy Ghost. She anointed. She anointed. She anointed. Y'all hear me? She anointed. But if you ask Rachel to pray for you, she gonna call me. Cause she ain't ready yet. Not that she ain't trying, but she ain't got there yet. Y'all missing it. I ain't catching what I'm preaching in here. Y'all ain't catching what I'm preaching in here. Ha, ha. Not 
God had to anoint her feet to dance because God gave her the feet to dance with. God gave her the ability to do it with. But there's a different inability in the Holy Ghost. Woo! There's a different inability in the Holy Ghost. Oh, good God Almighty. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost make you do stuff that you can't do. Man, somebody up right up here who came there like to wonder, good God, with two little feet, good God, and do a dare, good God. I know that's the Holy Ghost. Am I working this? Am I working this? Am I working this year? Am I working this year? I know that's the Holy Ghost, because she ain't got no rhythm. And she'll try all she wants to. But with the Holy Ghost get on her, it'll change her day. It'll change her walk. It'll change what she do. It'll change how she lift her hand. It'll change how she pray God. Because the Holy Ghost does take control now. I need to let the Holy Ghost take control of your life. I need to let the Holy Ghost lead you. I need to let the Holy Ghost guide you. I need to let the Holy Ghost deliver you. I need to let the Holy Ghost bring you out. I need to let the Holy Ghost prosper. Hallelujah. Am I working this? Am I working this? High five your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I need the Holy Ghost. I say, high five your neighbor. Say, neighbor. I don't know about you. I say, I don't know about you, but I need something to help me. I need something to help me. I need something to help me on the job. You don't know what I'm going through on the job. I need something to help me in my marriage. I need something to help me with my life. I need something to help me in my mind. I need something to help me when I get a bad report. I need help. I need help. I want you to jump on your feet, lift your hand, and say, help me, Holy Ghost. Say, help me, Holy Ghost. Say, help me, Holy Ghost. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came in like a mighty rush of wind, and it sat on them. Somebody say, sit on me, God. Here I am, God. Sit on me, God. Here I am, God. Sit on me, God. Sit on me, God. Did I change my mind, God? Sit on me, God. Did I change my ways, God? Sit on me, God. I take my character, God. Sit on me, God. Did I become different, God? Don't let me go, God. Don't let me up, car. Hold me down, car. I don't want to be like this, y'all. I don't want to live this way, car. I don't want to stay in the same position, God. I don't want to act like this, God. I don't want to, God. Sit on me, Holy Ghost. Uh. 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 Sit on me, Holy Ghost. 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 Oh, oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Good God Almighty, hallelujah. See, I cannot help you. See, the Holy Ghost, it cannot be contained. I'm gonna say it again. The Holy Ghost, it cannot be contained. I'm gonna say it one more time. The Holy Ghost, it cannot be contained. If you get touched by God, and you just can sit there and just rock in your seat, the Holy Ghost. Because good God, if you get touched by God, you're going to jump on your feet, God. You're going to lift your hands, God. You're going to open your mouth, God. You're going to give God a praise, God. Because the Holy Ghost, you cannot contain what God put in you. You can't hold it, God. I can't hold my peace, God. I can't hold my joy, God. I can't hold myself, God. I got to give God praise, God. I got to help somebody. I got to mention somebody. Can't hold what God put in me. It's too much for me to hold. It's too big for me to hold, God. I can't hold it. How about this? I can't hold it. Oh, 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 oh. Jeremiah said, like this year, he says, like fire. Shut up in my bones. Who I'm talking to? He said, the Holy Ghost is like fire. Shut up in my bones. I can't hold my peace I got to tell somebody about the goodness of God. I got to tell somebody that God is a deliverer. I got to tell somebody that God is a workmaker. I got to tell somebody that God is a provider. I got to tell somebody that he was wounded for my transgression and bruised for my nickel and the death time my peace was upon and with his strife. I got to tell somebody you are healed in the name of Jesus. Oh, 
It cannot be contained. Can I work this year? I got to go a little deeper. I got to go a little deeper. I got to go a little deeper. High five. Your neighbor said, Holy Ghost, help me. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit give you the ability to do what's normal cannot be do. You do. The Holy Spirit give you the ability to do what is normal, what you normal can't do. Read Acts. Read Acts. Read Acts. Hey, Rebel. Acts 5 and 8. They're working me this morning. For John truly baptized with water. Oh, so after showers, baptize you with water. Or uh, apostle shower, baptize you with water. Y- y- y'all, caught, y'all caught that? But w- w- what Jesus said, the lady? But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. But you should get a new baptism. That was a demonstration. That was a demonstration of what the Holy Ghost is going to do to you. Now, now, now watch this here. Watch this here. See, the Holy Ghost just don't get in you. Oh, can I work this? See, because I ain't got much time. See, the Holy Ghost just don't get in you. It get over you. That's why people walk into you, I see a glow on you. See, like your face is shining. Because the Holy Ghost just don't get in you. It get over you. See, when I baptize you, I smurge you in the water. So you are covered. You are covered. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creator. Because he covered. Oh, God. Because he covered. <laughs> I, I, I just did just dip your head, back of your head and pull you up. But I covered you in the water. So you are covered. So you are clean. So you are pure. So you are covered in the Holy Ghost. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Holy Spirit lifts up a standing. Because the enemy came to get you, but he didn't realize you were covered. The enemy came to take you out, but he didn't realize you were covered. Because when he came to Jesus, he came to Jesus to die and said, I'm attacking here. But when he came to Jesus, he found no fault in him. He saw no wrong in it. So when you're covered by the Holy Ghost, you are covered with no faults. Huh? You are covered with no mistakes, God. You are covered all the way. So you are covered in God. Now you should be baptized. Now what does it say next, lady? But you shall receive power. After- how five, three people say I got power. Oh, yeah, yeah, y'all said now, nah, y'all said now. Nah. I'm going to say it one more time because they ain't catch it. They ain't catch it. You ain't catch it. David, David, bring me a little oil. David, David, Samuel walks up to David and said, he pulled over all the brothers, but the oil wouldn't come out. The oil will come out. The oil will come out. I wonder why God held the oil back when the top had a hole in it. See, you going to people who has no oil on their life. Come on. Oh my God. Can I work this? Work it. You going to get people to do things who has no oil on their life. But the Bible says, give me a nap. The Bible says, when he got to David, the oil pulled out. Oh my God. Oh my God. Did y'all hear what I just said? When he got to David, the oil pulled out. Wait a minute. Israel is getting ready to fight the Philistines. It gives you the ability to do something you can't do. What you normally can't do. Normally, David can't whoop Goliath. Right. That's right. Oh, 
you out missing it. That's right. No, David can't take it out. But the all is on his head. <laughs> Woo! Teacher, he's a pastor. The all. So David goes, being set up by God. Being set up by God. David, go check on your brothers. I'm ten deep, daddy. You already got me doing something. Go check on your brother. So David go to the camp and hear Goliath talking all that noise. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. See, a, while, a lot of y'all can't get delivered because when you come to church, you won't open your mouth. If the devil been talking that noise to you, you need to open your mouth and let the... Come on! Cause God got somebody in the camp getting ready to fight for you. Am I working this? He got somebody in the camp getting ready to fight for you. So David said, now what he said? Oh my God. David said, now what he said? Y'all missing it. David said, what he said? I heard what you said. His brother said, it's a little cocky old joker. I know you killed the lion and the bear, but you're cocky. David said, if that's not a cause, I've come to tell you today a lot you came to church with a cause. And God is ready to deliver you today. God is ready to give you a breakthrough today. God is ready to bring you out today. God is ready to move the mountain today. God is ready to make the crooked thing ready. Right in your living room, cry. go ahead and give God a praise because God is getting ready to do it today. Come on. Come on. So what, what David said, David don't say is, God show is using me. God show has anointed me. God show is with me. David used a different tactic that most Christians don't use. Who is this Philistine giant who came to fight against the arm of God? What arm of God got down there beside the Israelites? Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Yeah, it's called David understood his inheritance. David understood that he came from Abraham. Oh, God. David understand that he came from Abraham. Good God, good God. And Jacob, God. And Isaac, good God. God. And, and, and the 12 sons of Jacob, God. Good God. David understand that he was in the line of the, of the Jews, God. Of the Israelites. Are oh, you hear what I'm saying? Sir? So you're not fighting the Israel. You fight who God has chosen, God. I need you to jump. If God has chosen you, God, jump on your feet and tell the devil you live the life. Because you're not fighting me. you fight God. You're not coming against me. you come against God. You're not talking about me, you're talking about God. You not mess with me, you mess with God. You fight the army of God. Oh, am I working this year? Am I working this year? But watch this year. So watch this year. So David gets on the battlefield because I'm anointed now. I could do. I have the ability to do what normally I can't do. Because I'm anointed now. So here's Goliath sees me and say, y'all sent a little child to me, a little boy, as a, a ready boy as a dog. I'm going to cut his head off. I'm going to feed his, his body to the birds. David said, you come with me with swords and spear. Y'all, y'all missed this here. You come to me, good. Well, we're all covered up in your garment. You well protected, God. Huh? But there's a crack on your forehead. And I'm going to do what I normally can't do. I'm going to take a slingshot and a rock. Huh? I'm going to do what I normally can't do. Because I'm anointed to do this, y'all. Because huh? you not fight me. You fighting God. Huh? I'm going to do what I normally can't do. Huh? Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. Huh? I'm going to do something that ain't nobody done before. Huh? I'm going to move like somebody ain't never moved before. Huh? I'm going to live like somebody ain't never lived. Huh? I'm going to do what God, God. And I tell you, while I'm running, God, at full speed, God, I'm not waiting because I realize God's got my back. Huh? I realize God's going to 
and make the crooked thing straight out. I realize that God be for me, who can be against me. I realize that no weapon fall against me wherever I pride. I realize I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. I realize the head and not the tail. I realize I'm above and not the So I'm going to take a slight shot at a rock cooker and I'm going to slew that guy. Out. And David let the rock go. I don't know if David let the rock go here. Uh, up here or down here, but, but all I know is that wherever you let the rock go, it could right here. Oh, good call about it. Oh, good. All I know is it could right here, God. Uh, oh, you hear what i I need you to do something that you've never done before, God. If you ain't never gave God a praise, praise Him this morning, God. If you ain't never clap your hands, clap your hands. If you ain't never done a dance, do a dance, God. If you ain't never praise God, give Him a praise. Do what you know ain't never done for. But the Holy Ghost gives you the power to do what the number can't do. Y'all said, I got I to gotta get out of here. I got to get out of here. High five, three people say I can do it. High five, people say I can do it. Oh, oh, I can do it. I got to go. I got to go. See a person. See a person. Make a profession and not be saved. See, that's what's wrong. People could make a profession and say, God, I give you my life here and not be saved. See, a person can kneel at the altar and weep and not know the gospel. You don't know what God does for you. Oh, God. See, a person can be baptized and not have a saving faith. Oh, what a thing. See, people can take Holy Communion, God, without having been converted. Oh, God. See, people can join at church and stay there, stay in the church for all reasons, good God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, people, that's normal, good God. But when you get the Holy Ghost, good God, good God, you don't walk alone, God. You don't walk by yourself, God. You don't ride by yourself, God. You don't come by yourself, God. Good God. Good God, man. I'm not worried about what the devil does, but God, because the God. That the devil has no power over me, good God. The Bible says, God, God. But get, don't get me wrong. God used the devil to get you in a place that you need to be in, God. God used the devil to get you back on your knee, God. Because sometimes we get cocky. Huh? Sometimes we get high-minded. Huh? Sometimes we get the big head. Huh? Sometimes we forget about God. Huh? And God has to pull you back on your knees, God. God has to pull you back to the church, God. But good God, my God. But when you get the Holy Ghost, you got some pushing you, God. You got something driving you, God. You got something going with you, God. I need you to lift your hand and say, God, push me, God. Push me to my next destiny. Push me to my next move, God. Push me to my next purpose. Push me, Lord. Oh, God. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. See, because in order for you to get the Holy Ghost, you got to be regenerated. I'm closing out right here. You got to be regenerated. In other words, you got to be born again. You got to be born again. You got to be born again. You got to be regenerated. See, it's the spirit that changed, brought about personal life by act of God and regeneration. The person is sinful nature, it changed. And the person is able to respond to God in faith. To God in faith. Can I ask y'all to deal with it there? Why do we have faith for everything everybody else say? I'm going to say it again. Why do we have faith for what everybody else say? If somebody walk up here and tell somebody about you, and that person don't even know you, they don't have faith to believe it and put you on Facebook. That's it. That's it. But God can say something and you have no faith in it. You have no faith in it. Because you have to be born again. Stop coming to church as usual. As they did in the old days. Hallelujah. I told somebody just the other day, see, like my mom and them, you ain't got to have no music. They'll stomp on wooden floors and have church. 
Me? I come on Al Green, Michael Jackson. I got to have a little rhythm. The young folks, they got to have that bebop. You not going to keep churches if you ain't able to do it all. If you just want old folk, don't no music. They'll come. But the young folks ain't coming. They want to hear that keyboard hit. Hit it one time, schools. They want to hear that keyboard hit. They want to hear it. Hit that bass back there for me, Jess. They want to hear that. Am I right, Lack? Now, y'all, y'all put me some rhythm together. See, 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 they, they, they need something to make their legs. They need something to get them going. Then after a while they get up. Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all ain't talking to me. They got to have something. Give me that tambourine. See the old folks. They have church. They have church. That's that. They have church. Am I right? But you ain't coming. The word, the word was good, but they have no music over there. <laughs> I can't go back. I need something to make me buck. <laughs> you see the difference? See, that's what the Holy Ghost does to you. It puts something in you to set you on fire. Now, mine may not be like yours, and yours may not be like mine, but it works on all of us in a different way. Hallelujah. It gives all of us the, the ability to do what we normally can't do. It gives all the ability to give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if we come together as a church, God, good God, are you hearing what I'm saying? And get on one accord, God. And we come together with the same mind, God. Ain't no telling what God will do in this house today. Ain't no telling how God will move in this house today. Ain't no telling how God will bless us today. Ain't no telling what door those God will open. Ain't no telling who will get healed. Ain't no telling who will get healed. If we come on one accord and just give God a praise, God. Good God, man. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you got to tap the tambourine, God. If you got to dance to the music, God. I don't care what you Whatever you got to do, God. Just do it. Huh? Whatever you got to do, it. just do it. Huh? Don't let the devil stop you. Let's do what you can't do before. Open your mouth. Give God praise. Bless God. Bless the King of Kings and the Lord. Just do it. Oh, you hear too? See? See? Read. I got to get out here. Read. I got to go. St. John, chapter 3. Jesus answered and said unto him. What he said? Verily, verily, I say unto thee. What? Except a man be born again. Uh Uh-huh. He cannot get see the kingdom of God. Except a person get a new life. Get a new life. He cannot understand God's way of doing things. That's why so many people are judgmental because it's their way of doing things. Not God's way of doing things. But except you be born again. This is what we did in the old church. This is what we did in the 60s. This is what we did in the 70s. This is what we did in the 80s. This is what we do in the 90s. But you in 2000 now. You in 2024. We don't do it like that no more. See, we still want to bring God and bring God back into the old instead of walking to the new. <laughs> oh. See, you still looking for Elijah. 
You're still looking for savior. But who he gave you now is the Holy Ghost. Woo! Teach you here, Apostle Shout. You're still looking for the old prophets. He gave you the Holy Ghost. You still looking for Jesus, and he sat at the right hand of God, making an intercessor for you, because he sent you the Holy Ghost. He sent you the Holy Ghost, but you don't want the Holy Ghost. You don't want the Holy Ghost. The three become one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The three become one. Oh, come on, read it. I got to go. Nicodemus said unto him. What? How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus said, how can I get back when I come out of? My head that got bigger. My shoulder wider. My body longer. Matter of fact, I'm taller than my mama. I'm going to get back in there. I ain't talking about a natural resource. I'm talking about a spiritual resource. <laughs> Read. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Come on. Jesus answered. What he said? Verily, verily, I say unto thee. What? Except a man be born of water and of the spirit. Except a man be born of the water and the spirit. What, what happened after that? He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He cannot understand God's way of doing things because he hasn't been born of the water and the spirit. He just only have a natural resource, a natural outlook, but he's not born of the water and the spirit. So he can't understand God's way of doing things. That's why you can tell everybody, people that's close to that, he know the Bible. But do we have the spirit? That's why you could be tricked and you call yourself church hurt because you don't have the spirit. God never gonna lead you wrong. 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 Did you pray before you did it? Did you ask God before you did it? Did you speak to God before you did it? Did you talk to God? Because God is not going to lead you wrong. I don't care how you feel. God is not going to lead you wrong. God. I don't care how you see it. God is not going to lead you wrong. God. I don't care how you want it. God is not going to lead you wrong. God. I don't care what you do. God is not going to lead you wrong. Did you ask God? Did you ask God? Did you ask God? See, we want to do it and then tell God to fix it. Y'all missed it. Watch this here. This is what Jesus said. They said, Jesus, why is this man blind? Is some of his mom and daddy did? Jesus said, no. It had nothing to do with them. It's to glorify God. See, some things you go through ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. It's just to give God glory. Y'all missed it. I wish I had a church in here. The same thing you're going in life man, ain't got nothing to do with God. With the devil, I mean. With the devil. God just wants to get the glory out of it. How five people say God's going to get the glory out of this? Tell you that going to get the glory out of this. Yo. I, I got to go, huh? How five my neighbor say, neighbor, God's going to get the glory out of this shit, God. I don't care what I go through, God's going to get the glory out of it. I don't care what I deal with, like God's going to get the glory out of it. I don't care who don't like me, God's going to get the glory out of it. God's going to get the glory out of this. Hallelujah. Turn your feet all over this house. I'm finished. I'm talking about the apostolic movement. Turn your feet all over this house. Apostolic movement. This morning, this morning, you, you may have never had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And you say, Lord, I want to feel that anointing. I want to feel that power. I want to walk in that power. And you're here. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. 
So if you don't believe it, it's not going to happen for you. If you believe that God is able to do a seed of abundance above all that you ask or think, He will do it for you. So if you're here this morning, then you say, Lord, I want to touch from heaven. I want to touch from heaven. I want a fresh anointing on my life. I want to feel fresh power. I want to walk in fresh authority. And you are here. I want you to make your way to this altar. Because I believe there's a move of God this morning.